In this section, we're going to go over the file API, which allows us to interact with the device's uh, core file system. We can also download files from the internet, we can upload files, we can get a, a, a directory um, printed out onto the screen in an app. Um, and you can see all these objects are available to us, the directory entry, uh, directory reader, file reader, we have the file transfer, uh, there's just a, there's a whole bunch of information uh, on the on the documentation website. Um, the file object and its properties. We can get the name, the full path, the dates, sizes. Uh, the file reader object has all these properties, so uh, it's pretty extensive. Now, what I want to do in this section is create. Uh, a uh, very simple app that will download a file from the internet onto our root file system. Um, and up until this point, I've been pretty much typing everything out, uh, and it's getting a little repetitive and tedious. So um, I'm just going to paste in some stuff and explain it as I go. Um, just you know, I don't want this to be too boring for you. So um, let's just get to the to the good stuff. So I'm going to paste in just my basic template, HTML. Um, I'm going to include jQuery, uh, the latest version. It, well, the latest 1.x version is 10.2. Uh, I have it over here in my JS folder. Um, now I'm including a Cordova.js, and this is could just as well be PhoneGap.js. It doesn't really matter because this gets included when your app is compiled in, in build. All right, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, just have it in the root directory. So it could be Cordova or PhoneGap. Now on the body, I have in a text input with the ID of file URL. So this is gonna be the input box where we can type in the location of the file. And then we just have a button to click to download it and then we have a message div to let us know what's going on. So I can save that and go and we want to enable Ripple. So this is all it's going to be. Um, we're not going to do any styling or anything. Um, just, just going to be able to download a file. So the next thing I want to do is, let's see, let's go in our script area. And I'm going to paste in our global um, phone gap stuff. So we have, first thing we're doing here is uh, initializing a variable called download directory. Uh, and then we're calling the event listener, which is standard in all of our applications. Let me separate these. And then we have uh, when the device ready events done it's going to call the on device ready function which is right here and then we're going to request the file system so we do window dot request file system local file system dot persistent now this persistent uh, we have two options it could be persistent or temporary persistent just means that it's not going to be deleted uh, whatever file we request or file system or file we put on the phone or device it's not going. It's not going to be deleted unless the user or an app deletes it. Uh, it's not just you know. So it's safe. If it's something that maybe it's just a file that's made to view once or something like that, then you could use temporary. But usually you'd want to use persistent. Zero is the amount of um, space allocated to the app. We're just going to keep it at zero. Um, and then we have the on file system success callback and I'm not exactly sure what this null is I just know that it's usually there so in here in this on device ready function we also have um, some jQuery we're grabbing the the element with the ID of download button which is right here and we're gonna call the on method and this here on click is the same as using dot click. Uh, it's, uh, jQuery actually uses the on method 
behind the scenes even if you use dot click. So we're just going to say on click we want a function to run and that all that function is going to do is call the download function or method. Again, if I say function or method, I mean the same thing. All right. So so now I'm going to paste in the on file system success here, okay? So this is the successful callback. Let me throw that in there. And it gives us this file system object to work with. So here we say file system dot root dot get directory. And this is where we want to put the directory that we want to upload our or download our file to. And I have it set as my downloads. Now we have this next parameter, which are some options we can use, and we have create true. And what this means is that if the my downloads folder isn't there, then it'll be created. All right, you can also have create false where it has to be there. Uh, and then here, this uh, self calling function, we're just assigning the download directory variable. Uh, and then this last parameter, fail, this is the function. I'm actually going to change this to on error. This is just the um, error callback function which we'll be creating. So the next method or function we're going to create is this download function. So this one's kind of big. Uh, what we're doing here is we're first grabbing um, the, the value of the of the I the element with the ID of file URL. So that is the input box. So we're grabbing that and putting that into this variable file URL. Uh, and then we're going to grab the local file name, which is going to be just the file, not the HTTP website and or the extension on the end, the .com or .org. We just want the file name. So in order to do that, we're going to run it through this function that we're going to build called get file name and obviously you pass in the URL to that function okay so next we are taking the message HTML uh, the message div which is right here and we're using the dot HTML method which is just like the JavaScript inner HTML method it's just gonna uh, insert whatever we want whatever we put in the parentheses into that element so we're just going to say downloading and then we're going to concatenate on the local file name. And then we're going to create a variable called file transfer that is a new a new file transfer object. You can see we're instantiating the file transfer object. So then we can use the download method uh, file transfer dot download and that takes a few parameters first being the URL file URL uh, the second being the um, the whole directory path uh, in the file name all right and then it takes two callbacks uh, one if it's successful one if there's an error so here we're just putting it into the HD message div we're just saying download complete file save to and then we can use this entry dot full path uh, if it's an error we're just going to alert and we're going to call the error, which is um, in JSON format. So we're going to use this JSON dot stringify um, function. All right. So now I want to create the file. Uh, where is it? This get file name function. All right. So basically, it does exactly that. It takes a URL and spits out a file name. Uh, you can see we're saying if there's a URL passed to it, we're going to create a variable which is equal to URL as a string. We want to use this dot match, which is this is a regular expression, which is just going to um, help format the file and get rid of the actual URL. And then we're going to say if that file name, all right, is there and it's greater than one then we want to return it but we don't want to return the URL so we're saying um, the URL dot split what split does is it takes a string and m makes it a bunch of turns it into an array of substrings 
and this is the separator that's used, which is the dot. So this is being used to get the extension, uh, say .com or .org, and that's put into its own array value. So you'll have the name of the file in one array, array value, and then the extension in another. And then we want to use the pop method, which is an array method. It takes the last value of the array off. All right, so it's going to be the extension. So we're popping that off. So what we're left with is just the file name. And that's, that's pretty much what that does. So the last thing we want to do is create our error callback. Let me paste that in there. And this is just a standard error callback. We're taking the message div and just inserting uh, we encountered a problem and the error code. So that's pretty much it. You can save that. Um, now we're not going to be able to test it on in the browser because Ripple doesn't it it, it can't use the um, phone gap methods and APIs that we need. So what we're going to do is I have FileZilla and I'm logged into techguystaging.com and I'm going to go to the test where'd it go? Ah, uh, that's weird. Where'd my test directory go? Huh. That is pretty strange. Alright, well, let's create a new one. Oh, you know what? I'm not in Tech Guy Staging, I'm in my personal website. Sorry about that. Alright, so you can see I'm in techguystaging.com slash test. And I'm going to create a file. And I'm just going to call it pgtest.txt. So this is going to be the, the file that I want to download. All right, so I'm going to compile the app uh, using phone build build. But first, we need to update the Git repository. So we're going to say git add all, git commit. Push all right, so that's pushed. So we can go to build.phonegap.com and update the code. downloads still working on generating the APK file let me just plug my device in here alright so I just need to download that APK. And now I just got to drag that into my device. All right. So now what I'm going to do is pause the video. I'm going to upload this. I'm going to install this on my device. I'm going to run the app. Um, to download that file and then we'll take a look at my file system afterwards alright so I downloaded the file to my device and it was successful I can see it in my file manager but for some reason it's not showing up in Windows in my internal storage I'm not sure why um, but the, it did in fact download so if you run the script uh, just use whatever uh, file manager you have or download a new file manager app and take a look and it should be in there so 
uh, that's how you can download an external file onto your mobile device.